What is up, my hippies? How are you doing today? Mark Christopher coming at you with another Hippie Pick interview. Today we have a guy named Lawrence, all the way from the UK. Works at Anderton's Music Shop. He's a music consultant. Works with a ton of people. Awesome guy, great guy. Huge fan. He's not a pick maker, okay? He's a huge fan of pick makers, picks, loves the plectrums, especially in the heavy, heavy, thick style. We'll get more into that later, okay? But today's show brought to you by John Coleman's Classic Barber Shop. Thank you, John, for letting me use this location. If you're ever in Williamstown, Kentucky, stop by, get your hair cut here, absolutely. So without further ado, this man is awesome. This man is talented, he's done so much for the guitar pick community. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to my man, Lawrence. What's up? Hello. How are you, man? I'm good, thank you. How are you? You know, I'm fantastic. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day in Kentucky, uh, where I'm recording this from. You're from the UK. You're mm -hmm. from Witcher, I hear. <laughs> So what is it? I am. It's just it's just gone five o'clock here in the UK. So yes, there we go. 2024, right? <laughs> Pretty almost, almost. Yeah. Okay, Lawrence, man, you, you are an awesome guy. Spoke with you a ton on Instagram. You do so much for the guitar pick makers community. So let's start. So you're from UK, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. How long have you lived there? Your whole life? Yeah, whole life. Born and born and bred. Born and bred. Awesome, man. Awesome. And I, from, from what I gather, you're a musician, obviously. <laughs> um, I, yes, indeed. I play guitar, bass, and drums. Those are my three yeah. instruments. That's awesome. What's, what's your favorite instrument? Oh, um, uh, <laughs> I think quite possibly bass. bass. Uh, I don't play drums as much anymore, but uh, bass is definitely that. What instrument did you start with? It was a uh, drums, actually. Um, and then you graduated to guitar and then bass or bass guitar or what? It was uh, followed, well, followed by bass and then followed by guitar. Um, I was inspired more, mostly by one of my favorite bands and um, their bassist and that just got me hooked on it. And then I learned how to play sort of guitar from that. I definitely find I play guitar more like a bass, really. So that's uh, more, really? more of a rhythmic feel there. With, with some funk feel to it, maybe, perhaps? <laughs> I think a bass, I think, of, you know, uh, James Brown music, you know? Mm. You, got, you got tons of, I love, I love the old 70s music myself, personally. But, so sure. you, Ben, who is this band? Who is the band that inspired you, my friend? Mm. Uh, this is a band called uh, Dead by April. That's uh, D-E-A-D-B-Y. A P R I L, a Swedish sort of metal, pop, pop metal, metal core sort of band. And uh, as soon as so I heard them, it was sort of hooked from there. They play in uh, well, a rather a rather low tuning of um, drop G. What? And that kind of <laughs> uh, brought up from there. Dude, that's in man. That's so low. Mm. Absolutely. Listen, if you're out there and you're like, what does Drop G sound like? Check this band out. Dead by April. Yeah, nope. absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Free promotion for everybody today, you know. Awesome. So, yes. let me ask you this. You're inspired by this band. You start playing bass and then guitar. But how long have you been playing? Sure. So, uh, the uh, bass, rather, was first started in 2013. And guitar was 2014, but drums was on and off uh, throughout my early years, starting from about, must have been about nine years old or so. Yeah. And that was, of course, school gets in the way, as well as exams that we all, we all know and uh, you know, not so keen on. So that's what, that's what kind of did it, but it's always been a hobby. Um, and now at the age of 26, I uh, now very much find that is my, uh, as, as a hobby, which is what I love so yeah. much. Uh, you work at a music store, yes? Anderson's? Yes, that is correct. And um, that, and I, I, 
uh, like to promote, if you will, the extended range side of things with seven strings and eight strings, um, left-handed, more importantly. Yeah! <laughs> I was getting ready to bring that up. So, my man, That's, mm-hmm. is, uh, so he and I started talking because I saw a picture that he posted up online. I'm like, you're left-handed and you play Schecter guitars. I love guitars. <laughs> so left-handed. So, good mm. us. So, what got you into Schecter? Yeah, as well, uh, Schecter is one of the brands where they make uh, well, left-handed guitars. But more importantly, they offer such a diverse range of left-handed instruments. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the Constructing a guitar left-handed is not a difficult thing to do, as it were, but the problem is it's all a part. Um, for, for those who you know, perhaps aren't aware that you have to get left-handed bridges you have to get left-handed um, volume controls, tone controls, um, switches as well. All that has to be left-handed, which is well, difficult to get a hold of and, of course, more expensive. So that's definitely it. And uh, as before mentioned, that I think that's uh, with my, the band Dead by April. They inspired me to go to these lower tunings. The guitarist there uses a string guitar and the bassist uses a five-string bass, so that is what I like to do. Mm, five. <laughs> so, like, I mean, they got to they gotta use some heavy gear, man, heavy strings, I'm assuming? Mm. Yes, so the, uh, the, the guitarist there, I think he's using at least a 74-gauge, if not an 80-gauge for the, the thicker string, and the bassist will be using a, a 145 for the thickest bass string. Might as well just yeah. cut the strings off a piano then. That's some thick, <laughs> big, you know, the lowest string. That's mm, pretty much that. Yeah, that's insane. So, and you, and you, that's your, that's your jam, man. That's that's the type of music you play. Mm, it, it is indeed. So, uh, I guess that uh, also reflects. Uh, my plectrum use as well which is has also been uh, you know, uh, if you will influenced by such thicker strings and such uh, heavier playing so you play with heavy 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 picks heavy plectrums plectrums picks mm. all same thing yes uh, so i i think uh, we all know the the industry standard, you know, well, sorry, the industry range of anything from half a millimeter, 0.5 up to um, one millimeter, which I'm sure most of the players uh, watching this will use. And to go up to a three millimeter uh, or two millimeter is quite a jump. So, for example, we may have this collection by Swiss Picks. Yeah. Oh, okay. By the way, Swiss picks, mm. that's genius marketing. It looks like Swiss cheese. <laughs> Cause that's awesome. That's just genius. Show that again. It, absolutely. So there we go. Uh, that would be. So what's the millimeter on that? So that one's two millimeters, um, which isn't the, the thick, the thickest pick in the world, but to a lot of players that would be quite thick. So that is something that I'm, you know, I'm wanting to, I started sort of exploring there um, and into the world of boutique picks, which is, of course, um, what you, um, even yourself, you are building yourself now, if I'm not correct. So what's the, uh, so I've tried to, I've tried to look this up online and I've yet to find like the Guinness Book of World Records, but like, what is the, the thickest pick out there? Like what, what, <laughs> what pick you've ever played on? Mm, well, uh, the, I have to ha- uh, thank uh, John from Heavy Repping. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, who? In the bio, but check this guy out. Very knowledgeable, very, mm. very inform- informative. Sorry, mm. um, on on not just guitar pick makers, but the the history behind picks. He's got a new series out that he's. It's a it's an audio. It's a, it's a podcast thing, you know. But he's posted up on YouTube. But it's uh, he's reading a new book. And it's, I mean, it's so informative. If you are just a guitarist out there and you play with the 50 cent or the free guitar center pick, it's worth the time to, to, to go investigate what we're talking about. And John is the expert on <clears throat> picks. Go ahead. Absolutely. Yes. So, no, absolutely. And uh, this was by the brand Zwart uh, mm-hmm. Plectrums. 
and uh, this was the plectrum that I was tagged in. It's made of zero coat, and this is a 22 millimeter plectrum. With, uh, and uh, this uh, was my first, if you will, sort of started it all off, as it were, with my big plectrum playing. So that then spawned other ones. So we have then uh, the 22 millimeter plectrum made out of acrylic. And this is from Ricky Le Pretrier in France. And we've also then got one from Das Atomic picks as well, again with the... 22 as well? This one is probably closer to about um, 30, uh, 30 millimeters. So we're going even, even heavier there. When you, when you play, you just illustrate <laughs> how you would hold that in your playing. Sure, absolutely. So myself, I'm using my thumb and index finger and for me holding it i'm actually holding it with my other fingers sort of out space like so yeah. so yes exactly that really um and that kind of brings i guess back going back to the uh seven string and eight string playing okay. that of course i am you know i'm doing myself and i think really ourselves as musicians we are athletes whether we know it or not i never thought of that before that's mm, and with, which is in essence you when we play we're using our whole bodies in some places instances to play our music and granted it's not the most physical thing but as you're playing you're using wrist muscles forearm muscles upper arm shoulder and mostly of your core, as particularly as it's supporting the instrument. So with that in mind, in my opinion, guitar playing should be as ergonomic as possible. And thus, when you're using uh, a thin pick, you're having to strike the strings with more force and use more energy and time. Uh, using a thicker pick will alleviate all of these well, of symptoms, as it were, that you don't have to then push with so much effort. And granted, the 22 millimeter plectrum might be a bit extreme, but it still provides the same impact. Excuse me. So, yeah, so I've never, I've never thought about that before. Because, like, when you play, I'm lefty, so this is my left hand. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, obviously, I'm not doing this motion, but I'm, <laughs> I'm using muscles in, in every single bit of this while the strap is on me. So, my, mm -hmm. my torso, my chest, and my torso. My, my body is engaged mm. and you're saying that it makes it easier to just, to be able to, to just, to move. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly that. That's cool. So, so let me ask, let me ask you this. So, the, so somebody out here is watching our interview right now and mm. they're like, yeah, but I mean like, dude, I have the thinnest pick possible and it's my favorite cause it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. What would, what would you say to them? What would you say to them to try this? Absolutely. Well, we are always searching for the best tone, as it were. We're always trying to replicate a sound or find something for ourselves. And you will be spending hundreds, if not thousands, on the guitars, the basses, the amps, the pedals. And ultimately, the sound that you're hearing is actually coming from the plectrum. Uh, okay, yes, the, the, the pickup and the amp is what we're hearing and it's voicing that, but what you're actually connecting to the strings, apart from your hands and fingers, is the plectrum. And whilst the, uh, for boutique plectrums may be more expensive, granted, because if we're, well, how much will it cost? In British currency, it would be about 50 pence. So yours, uh, $70, I imagine. No, sorry, 70 cents, sorry, 70 cents. Yeah. And that's where it is. So really, my first ever pledge foray into the boutique pledge from World was back in around 2016. I was just on Instagram and BHL picks, uh, Brock Littles. There's going to be a link in the bio for them because that guy is mm. awesome. He, uh, the, his picks first appeared and it was something along the lines of this. It was a... Wow. Now what's that mean? UH, so this one's a thermoplastic UHMPWE, and this one's sort of quite soft to the touch. 
and it's great for absorbing sweat, moisture as you're playing. Will give you um, quite a softer tone, as it were, as you're playing. And first saw it, and I didn't think much of it. And then as I was watching more YouTubers and guitar channels, as it were, like uh, Rob Chapman, Rob Scallon, uh, Jared Dines, any any of these players really, they're starting to use these play other plectrums, and that's what got me into it and ever since then I've gone through a whole range of materials be it um, wood thermoplastics peak tall on uh, and stone as well and that was going through plectrums such as purple plectrum zone one uh, we have this one here with again the thermoplastic okay we have tall on again by BHL we even have uh, ones from KMC picks a nice maple plectrum. How thick is that? And that one is again in the 20 millimeter bracket. There, uh, we have Hushmid guitars, an acrylic, like a nice what, what's the uh, called the big round shape, which again is absolutely fantastic, striking. And finally, about October, November of 2019. And first sort of stumbled upon Zort picks, not just with the 22 millimeter, but again with the wooden designs. Yeah. And this was something, an opportunity for me, or rather was offered that I was able to join Zort tribe, yeah. which I think you might have seen yourself. Uh, which I think you might have seen yourself with Zort tribe. Yeah, yeah. I, so I, I followed him and the guy's phenomenal. That guy is phenomenal mm. what he does. Mm. And he has some unique designs that I think somebody that I'm interviewing created. <laughs> uh, that, that, is, that is true. So we'll have this collection with grip marks in. You can see we have this almost whirlpool yeah. shape attached to the the plectrum itself and that was designed for well, with my own designed by myself then placed on the plectrum as for to make the plane more ergonomic but also uh easier to sort of hold on to and again it's this never-ending quest of tone that we always need to find and there's many other plectrum companies i'm sure which are, have been left untouched but there's so many still to go through but it's a, a real journey so let me say this as far as tone when i first started making i started making wooden picks right so mm. I did the cody wood and then over here i got my signature series arrowhead i don't know if you can see mm -hmm. it on the camera um but this is made of blood wood and so like the thing is is like you know, to your average guitar player, they're like, man, like, what's the difference? Why do I want to spend that money? And it's like, first of all, this sounds way different than this. And they're mm -hmm. made of wood. And you think, oh, they're all going to sound the same. And it's like, no, 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 no. The material that you use makes it stand out. And, and so there's brightness qualities. There's lower resonances. There's frequencies that come out. A cha when you strike that pick. And like, I've, we've done demos here with Hippie Picks, where, where uh, Chance, my, my buddy Chance, who's part of the Hippie Camp, uh, you got this war tribe, I got the Hippie Camp, you know? It's like, <laughs> but um, where he will just play these back to back to back and let you hear them. And they sound, they all sound different. So we don't think, what is it, like, what is it? U-H-M-P-W-E, W-W-F? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, we don't think... We don't think, oh man, why do I want to invest in that? But like the tone you get out of it is completely different, as well as the grip. If you don't mind, like the, the showing mm. your little design that you did, the swirl. Mm. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. There you go. Yeah. So like I've noticed, like one, it's cool. You know, it's got this unique <laughs> design in it, but but it's not designed to be cool. You know, it's really designed to have a grip to it. Now, when I got into boutique guitar pick making, well, boutique guitars, rather, I was at my local shop at Willis Music up in um, where I live, and this guy was showing me these picks. They were made of acrylic. This is mine. This isn't the, the, the pick maker I'm about to plug. But it, 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 was, it was a company called V-Picks, right? And there was one called The Mummy, and it had these gashes mm. on the side, 
And I was like, dude, that'll cut your finger. He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> ripping, right? And I'm yes, like, I think, think I can help. There you go. Oh, that's it. Yeah, you have it. That's a part. Yeah. You, okay, awesome. That was the first boutique pick I ever, I ever bought. And I was bl- mm. blown away that that was way better sound quality on any instrument, hands down, than your, you know, free pick. You know, I'm not slamming Guitar Center for giving out the free, cheap plastic picks. But I mean, <laughs> when you get that, you think the, the, the material makes the tone sound different. The fact mm. that somebody's invested their time like you, where you say, I want something in it so that I can hold the pick better, you know? And, and that makes it ergonomical, easier for your plan. That's genius. That's genius. Yeah. It's, 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 it's very much how we have now the more modern designs of guitars, which are fan frets. So, of course, we're playing with uh, frets to follow the radius of your fingers because they're not all the same size and shape. And that's what guitar and bass playing should ultimately, should ultimately be. And if we go to something like the band uh, aforementioned with their low tunings and their thicker strings that I'm using, we need something that's going to attack the strings with more punch and power. And for something like that, you'd imagine you'd want something like Stone Age Plectrum. They make beautiful picks, don't they? They are phenomenal. Absolutely. Yeah. With our with our gate there, or if you are going to go for something completely different, you may even want to go as far as uh, Windspear picks in the UK with some yeah. more grips, which aren't quite 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 as heavy, or even Iron Age and the Imperial series with yeah. again another tri shaped. They're awesome. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, okay, so let's get back to your, is, is, is it signature pick? Is it, I mean, is this your signature pick that you got? <laughs> no, no, I, well, it, I wouldn't, not as a signature pick as such, just more like a, a, a design that is, of okay. course, coming through from Zwart Picks. They're all available. If you head over to uh, Zwart Picks on Instagram, mm-hmm. message Emanuele, he'll design it, and you can actually have your Pletrum, whatever you choose, with that engraving on as well, um, be it with some other engraving designs that I've, I've sort of designed as well. So uh, there's a bounty full of, of Pletrums out there, and more so for the thicker, the thicker picks, if that's what you're into. Now, it seems like you are the guy who loves the thickest picks possible. Is that correct? <laughs> Off online, the place the picks as thick as you. you have, yes. You have a 200 millimeter thick pick. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not far behind it because we are currently running the 50 millimeter challenge. Well, yeah, so. which I got, my, I got mine right here. And this oh, the penguin. But can I, can, I, can, I, can I say something real quick? Is that okay? Of course. <clears throat> so Lawrence and I, and another guy named Lawrence as well, from Plumstone Picks, um, started this little challenge. It was, it was simple. It was little. And then it kind of got blown up. John from Heavy Reppin is involved. There's other pick makers involved. And they... The, the goal is to make a 50 millimeter thick guitar pick that is playable. Um, but secretly, you know, I had actually been working on a, a thick pick because you, you, if you remember, you were talking earlier about the ergonomic of the whole motion while playing, right? Mm-hmm. And while I said I do have the hippie camp and, and my buddy Chance is, is, is part of that, I have a lot of people that help me brainstorm ideas and I'll pitch ideas to them. And I'm like, what do you think about this? And they're like, no, that's stupid. Don't ever do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, one day my, my friend Jared and I were talking with my brother, Eric, and, and um, you know, he, he was telling me a story about a guy that he met recently, right? Some old mm-hmm. rocker dude, you know, loves music, but currently he's having a hard time playing guitar because he has arthritis, you know, he's in his like seventies and He's lost that. People like you and me, we're young, you know, we can, we can shred all day, we can enjoy what we do, but, but these guys that are, you know, I, one day we're going to be in that same boat, you know? So mm-hmm. we, 
when, when secretly I had been working on this idea for quite some time before the challenge even started. But then I, I, hmm. I was like, well, if the challenge is here, then why not go ahead and just present this to the world? But I, I'd done a lot of research on arthritis and how you have these arthritis balls that you hold. Hmm. And some you squeeze, they're like stress balls. But the, the idea behind it would be to have something super big. Now, this is only 20 mm. This is not the biggest pick yet. Um, but the, if you see, it's not finished, but you see the point at the top, and you just hold it like this. Oh, yes. And then you, you, you play. And, I mean, you got to think, man, if you've been playing guitar since the 40s or 50s, and your hands are killing you, this is going to be tiny to hold. Even, even at a two mil, you know, it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. But I had this idea to kind of create something for people with arthritis so that they can, they can still continue to enjoy playing music, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, sure, absolutely. Well, that's, that's uh, you're, you're, you are correct that we, whether um, the whole world is, people definitely yourself now we're living longer we are getting to the point where we are needing um, an in, something to support people playing and these people of course will have been playing the likes of Fender or Gibson or any other brand that's been a long-standing legacy in the world and they are struggling to make chord shapes on the fretboards or just play in general and that is that, that's uh, absolutely incredible that something like that can come about so whilst this 50 millimeter challenge may be uh, a slight uh, bit of fun for for all of us involved there's actually something quite deeper uh, involved in, in in something like that in fact um whilst whilst we have it here um the brand woodland Woodstoy, uh, woodland cast made a spectrum like this which is not not uh, not sort of, you know sort of thick at all but you can see the shape that's designed that there's much more of a stub, a stubby plectrum, which is far more easier to handle, hold on to. Yeah. So there is, so who, so what was the company again? I didn't catch it. Oh, it's Wood, uh, Woodland Cast. Okay. Now, so th are they, are they on the same idea where it's like, we want to make picks for, you know, people who maybe like, there's like a, a kid who had a major car wreck or something, you know, and, mm. He's, you know, has trouble with his hands and he's going through like some physical therapy and it's like, I want to play guitar, but I can't use this, you know, because that's the paper thin. But then you go, know, dude, can you hold on to this? If you can, then yeah, buddy, you know? Mm, absolutely. No, it's not, it's not a, uh, a sort of signature thing, as it were, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, in some essence, this could prove, this could prove to be, it could turn in, into something like this. And I think that's what is important for us musicians. There's so many out there who well, have damaged hearing, as it were, from all the loud venues that they've played through. Unfortunately, uh, I myself still have my, my hearing, but there will come a time where I will reach for the thicker plectrums not through choice but through will i don't think i make it very easy for myself because i am using the thicker strings and the drop tuning so i need something that can withstand um the the uh the, the thickness of said string and will they'll wear out quicker if i don't have something that can take the punishments yeah maybe a cinder block or like a tree limb you know <laughs> quite possibly Right, possibly. But before we carry on with more of the spectrum things, I must ask you, what is in that mug of yours that you're oh, drinking? Yes. Okay, so today, <laughs> okay, today I'm drinking C4. I love C4. But can I tell you something about this mug? Please do. I was in fifth grade and my grandmother, mm. who, you know, long passed away, God rest her soul, gave me this. This is probably my favorite coffee mug of all time. And so my wife and Beautiful. I we're talking about tattoos that we're thinking about getting and get this you're gonna think this is weird but i thought about getting this whole design right here like oh wow the, yeah i thought that'd be really cool yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean it's silly i like my tattoos I, you know i don't i didn't go overboard you can't see any of them well i guess you can see that one but you know <laughs> um fantastic Hey, huh? My first tattoo I ever got was for my grandfather who had just passed away. And so I started thinking, I never had a tattoo for my grandmother. And this is like my, dude, I, like, dude, fifth grade. That was like 200 years ago. And this <laughs> car I've carried with me 
and preserved, you know, so nobody, but yeah, I drink the C4, love C4. So let me ask you this, man. Um, you are a huge fan of guitar picks. Mm-hmm. You are a huge fan of the thickest pick possible. You're a musician, you're a player. I'm assuming you're in a band. Have you ever made a guitar pick? Oh, well, I, have, I did actually try one just using a spare piece of acrylic. Okay. And funnily enough, that was just using uh, a saw and some files. And suddenly, all of a sudden, you realize what goes into the creation of all these plectrums and what we have. And it is, wow, nigh, nigh on impossible without some form of computer assistance to get a clean shape. Yeah, I have the utmost respect for you and for all the other Petra makers now that I tried it myself. It's definitely not easy. Was it playable? <laughs> no, unfortunately, there's, there's no evidence of it due to it being um, so, so sort of, uh, bad as it were. But uh, I am definitely going to stick with something like something of... Uh, the like the plectrums that I currently own. We have something uh, similar, similar with the the gravity picks plectrums, yeah. where of course we've got the acrylic. And I think the worst part of or the hardest part of the uh, plectrum building is the bevels yeah. that you have to yeah. put through onto those plectrums. We've even got uh, hawk picks as well, and the abalone where they've had to. I really like their product. Yeah. Mm, mm. And that's, and that's it really. That is what we, we, we do. But I think if you see from something like this, I of course employ, employ you to give it a go. Absolutely. If you've never sort of tried one, maybe not the 22 millimeter, but definitely something within the region of uh, five for certain that will definitely assist your playing there. And it makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've talked about your playing. You, you've talked a lot about other bands that you like, uh, mm. particularly. But uh, so what do you do? Are you in a band? Yes. Yeah, so a new band just formed. This is, uh, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Name is Forward Commands. That's stat stylized. We've got FW, um, sorry, uh, FWD dot CMD, Forward Command. Go check them out. What kind of music is it? Is it like the, the heavy stuff that you like from Dead by April? No, it's a uh, complete opposite in fact, it's just indie pop. We're drawing on the likes of Billy Eilish and Red Hot Chili Peppers. So in the fusion of both. So. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely, as soon as we get done, I'm going to go check out your music. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. And so you're, you're, you're a fan, you're a musician. Mm-hmm. And, and while you have respect for guitar picks in general, you tend to, to, to have a more respect more profound respect for the the boutique makers yeah mm, so the the the, ple- the plectrums that i tended to go for were a whole variety of materials um and the ones such as even vice picks from the uk where we've got acrylic combined with wood as well with the grip marks on you see there that's cool. and which, which, which is absolutely fantastic for, for your playing force or holding on to. But it's really more of a case of what, this, what, what sound you can get from it. If I need something that has more mids and more trebles in, where typically in metal you would reduce the mid EQ on your amp, we're going to be wanting to push that through now once we're going into the drop tunes, tunings and the, again, the thicker strings once more. So we need something that's going to provide more power and more attack there. We have the likes of uh, the peak material, again, coming from purple plectrums, yeah. a lot more sl- slippery. Phenomenal work. Absolutely. absolutely. And that is something that can be explored if you're looking for that tone, rather than buying a new amp. What about the plectrum? Yeah. I tell you, when I, when I first started into the boutique stuff, I kind of swore by V picks for a long time. <laughs> it's, you know, but the, there was a song that we did at church. I play at church. Mm. A song we did, and it's a really cool part. It wasn't super hard at all. You know, it's just four notes, super simple, and it's not even fast, right? But I got out 
the thickest pick I had, which was, I think at the time, the dimension from, uh, mm. and buddy, let me tell you what, I shredded that thing and people, people came up, man, how do you play? How do you play that fast? They go, well, it's just the pick. And I go, no, uh-uh. and I go, yeah. And I show them like something stupid, huge. And they're like, I can't do that. I go, well, that's how you get that sound. And then they go out and they get a pick and they go, dude, I can. I go, yeah, like th- this part is, you know, it's nothing. You know, like, it's like, you, oh, it's like you said, you know, like athletes, right? This is athletic sport. You can run fast, but you also got to be able to dribble and shoot the ball, you know? <laughs> you can run fast, but you also got to be able to throw the ball, you know? So it's two parts, right? So you can run fast all you want, but can you shoot the ball? Can you dribble? Can you, you know what I mean? College. So it's, it's two parts. That's a great analogy, man. It's athleticism. Yeah, I like that. Listen, we're running out of time. Unfortunately, I, I kind of have to cut this short. But is there anything you would like to say to our fans listening today? No, absolutely. No, all the, definitely you've got to check out both, well, hippie picks, first of all. Thank you very much for this opportunity this to speak to the world. This is coming from a guy who has not even played one of my picks. So he's on, you're on, <laughs> you're even, you never even, you never tried one of my picks. Not, not yet. Yeah, I sent John some picks, but you haven't. I need to send you some. This is what I'm going to send you. That's it. <laughs> I think that would be just the right, uh, the right diameter there. That would be the right gauge. Yeah. But no, th- no, absolutely. No, thank you very much once again. And uh, absolutely, I think uh, this will be down in the links below, below on this video. Got all these different platform makers to um, check out, have a look at. It's definitely worth oh, having that. Check out his signature design on the Zwartz picks. That's so cool. I, I've like, so I've been following him for a while and I had no idea you were the, the mastermind behind that. That's awesome. <laughs> plenty more yet to come. Plenty more yet to come. And uh, we'll have some, we'll have some more, more designs coming through. So yes, no, it's War Picks, War Tribe. Um, myself, I'm available on Facebook or Instagram as well. So please, by all means, get in touch with myself. I'm more than happy to help you out with the, uh, the side of different plectrums. Definitely metal, definitely gents. And if you're looking for more strings as well, even if it's left-handed, it happens to help. Yeah. All right, man. We have to run. It was great to talk to you, and I look forward to talking to you again. Hopefully, we can set up another video, go more in-depth with, like, some other topics. You know, we'll see what what happens. But thank you so much for your time and being here today, man. Thank you. Take care. Yes, sir. That was Lawrence. Lawrence is awesome. He's so informative. He isn't just some guy who comes out and says, you know, I'm going to play a guitar pick. Uh, I'm going to use this blue one because it's blue and it looks cool. Tomorrow I may use the purple one. No, like he's invested the time in studying like what each pick does, how each pick sounds, the tonal quality, the shapes, the differences, This man is is very knowledgeable when it comes to how guitar picks play and the importance of guitar picks, especially in the type of music you play. It doesn't matter what type of music. You can play jazz, you can play classical music. I love playing classical music, you know? You can play heavy metal, I don't care. But the important thing to know is that each pick is different, like you. You and I, we're fans of music, but we're different. And we're unique, and we're original. We're one of a kind, just like each of these picks. So it doesn't matter if you buy a pick from me, it doesn't matter if you buy a pick from any other pick maker out there. The point is, each of these are handmade, each of these are original, and each of these are different, and have different qualities and different properties, just like you. Just keep that in mind. I'd like to think classic barbershop, for being a sponsor of today's video. If you're ever in Williamstown, Kentucky, come to Class and Barber Shop. Get your hair cut. That's where I got this lovely mess of hair from. Also, I would like to thank Landrum Investments for endorsing and sponsoring this show. They have been a tremendous help in getting Hippie Picks underway. Um, they've done a phenomenal job, so look for them as well. They both sell uh, my Hippie Picks, so go to one of their locations and buy a Hippie Pick. 
But don't forget that. Each pick is different. Some may be big, some may be thin, but we all have special qualities and properties. Each of us is different, but you're unique and you're original. And don't forget that. Don't forget that in your musical abilities. Don't forget that in your playing. You don't have to emulate or copy anybody else. And heck, if you want to make your own guitar pick, I encourage you to do it. It may not work, that's fine. You know, my first guitar pick didn't work either. But yours, you know, keep at it. Keep doing what you do because you're the only person that can do it as good as you. Listen, I love you. He loves you. Don't forget to have a great day. And don't forget to be a hippie.